Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Tim Shai, for your kind introduction. And so thank you, the organizing committee, for uh, letting me uh, share my uh, talk with you uh, today. Um, I actually, we feel very home uh, at this conference. Uh, as I was introduced, I graduated uh, actually from the Department of System Science. Uh, actually, I was uh, among the first batch of PhD students who joined the Department of System Science at the Tokyo Institute of Technology. And that probably the first Department of System Science in Japan established in uh, 1979. Mm -hmm. uh, in that 1979, uh, so I got into that PhD program. Mm -hmm. And we still remember we have uh, four PhD students in the field of uh, system mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm. I work in the field of uh, AI, mm -hmm. and uh, one, uh, another one is in game theory. Professor mm -hmm. Okada is quite well known. Uh, he actually is now at Kyoto University. And one in fuzzy control. And the last one in information systems, or uh, actually in general system theory at that time. So we have S equal to I multiply P multiply O. So <laughs> <laughs> that very abstract. Yes. Okay. Um, today, what I'm trying uh, maybe uh, to share with you today is actually my personal interest uh, in the uh, direction of uh, research support, uh, particularly for, for uh, Thailand and also for. Uh, other developing countries uh, in the sense that uh, research data should be open and should be shared. And that probably will actually help uh, the uh, developing countries to make use of the money more efficiently. So, uh, so I'm not sure that this, okay. Okay, I think that, yeah. So these are uh, the uh, topics that I, I would like to share with you. Uh, so first will be the introduction, uh, really uh, briefly about my background and then the motivation why I'm interested in the uh, open research data. And then go uh, to uh, more detail uh, on the, the research data. And a little bit brief on uh, research support systems and then uh, before the end uh, of uh, this talk, just would like to introduce my personal research that I uh, attempt to develop a kind of uh, research uh, support system, uh, which is called Link Open Scholar. Okay, uh, so my background, um, as I mentioned, I uh, actually uh, got my PhD from the uh, Department of System Science, uh, the first department in Japan, and my research actually uh, was in the field of knowledge representation, so how to represent uh, knowledge. And uh, the approach that uh, I used, probably you know that in the AI in the uh, 1980s, most of people will use the approach, symbolic approach, but by logic programming. So uh, I also uh, actually follow that, but it is not uh, logic programming, it's a kind of computational model where each element is represented as an XML document. Are you familiar with XML document? Right, okay. Yes. So the form is, is that uh, you have some relationship uh, in terms of you have certain number of bodies that related to uh, the, the head. And each of these uh, body or head is an XML document. So it could be a document or it could be anything. Right. And as you know that we can use XML to encode mathematical structure. So you have the math ML, and you could also use uh, XML to represent chemical structure. Therefore, you can also represent chemical reaction uh, equation by using this uh, kind of public uh, formula. Okay. And to make it easy, you can uh, read this that head if you have body one, body two, and body n, where n could be zero. Okay. So uh, that uh, is actually uh, the major work that uh, I have proposed. And also, uh, apart from the representation, also there was a sort of engine uh, to perform this kind of computation. And after that, uh, apart from this uh, XML, then people start, XML used particularly to 
uh, they must to show the syntax, uh, syntactic information. And a few years later, people start to uh, think that we should represent semantics of meaning on the web. So RDF was proposed as a sort of symbol and Javinu cell representation of meaning on the web. And, and XML, uh, 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 RDF or research descri uh, description framework is, is very simple. It's a triple consisting of subject, predicate, and then object. Okay? And the subject, predicate, and object could be represented by URI, so that will be an idea you need. Okay? And the object, uh, apart from this uh, object, the, the, the object could be a string of character as well. So it's a triple, very uh, rep simple representation of them. And uh, with the same framework, so I have replaced XML document by RDF graphs. Okay, so you could have complicated graph, but still the same structure that you have head RDF if you have this uh, body uh, RDF. Okay, and RDF is quite general. Okay, it could be uh, serialized or represent text by using XML or using JSON. JSON also is widely used uh, in order to represent uh, the graph. So that that uh, is uh, the work on the node representation. And then after that, so I start to uh, shift uh, to metadata. Uh, metadata, as probably you know, is uh, is a structure data about other data. And a good example of metadata is library card. Okay, this case book is a data, and library card is a metadata because it's used to describe books. Okay, and structure because library cards are divided into title, author. So have some structure in uh, this library card. Okay. How many of you have seen this library card cabinet or used? Yes, of course. Still? Still. But the <laughs> new generation. Still. <laughs> still. <laughs> <laughs> in this case, still. <laughs> okay, the library card. No, Dr. Tepcha is trying to look for. So he hasn't seen this yeah, yeah. library card cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> <laughs> because uh, right now, I think that they use this uh, computer, so uh, the new the new students will never use like, like this. They, they <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then, uh, so for metadata, uh, then move to this uh, link open data, start to uh, be interested uh, in uh, the open data. Okay, and uh, link open data or link data actually is the concept uh, proposed by uh, Tim Berners-Lee. Uh, originally, probably in uh, 1998, uh, yesterday, uh, I think there's a talk about uh, the history of Tim Berners-Lee. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think after he proposed the web, uh, maybe a few years later, uh, actually he proposed web as, as the web of documents, but a few years later, he thought that not only document but data also should be connected. So it's a concept of web of data. And that probably appeared in this note in 1988 uh, uh, or 89. But the official proposal of the for link open data appeared in the, uh, uh, the worldwide web conference held in Beijing, probably in 2006. I also attended that conference. And it's the first time that he organized a workshop on link open data. So the concept of link uh, open data, is the idea is just write web. So instead of connecting or linking documents, he, he wants uh, to link data. Okay. And the underlying uh, representation scheme, he proposed to use RDF. Okay. Uh, that's the reason why uh, I'm interested in link open data. And um, so what um, Tim Berlisetai proposed that the data should be shared, okay? And he uh, assigned actually five uh, level of sharing of data. So if you put your data on the web, okay, in, in terms of PDF file, then you will give one star, okay? But if you give your data 
in terms of proprietary format. For example, Excel, which is better than PDF because you can actually download Excel and then do the computation. Then he gave two stars. But if you give uh, your data in the non proprietary format, for example, this uh, SVC, uh, the uh, a comma value, then you get three stars. But if you give your uh, data into RDF, then you get four stars. And if you uh, represent your data in RDF and then allow the linking of the data, then you get the five stars into that. So you have these uh, five levels of uh, sharing of data. And uh, based on this idea, uh, there's a researcher from Germany uh, tried to convert the information of Wikipedia represent all the information of the using RDF and uh, this is called DBpedia okay DBpedia so become sort of Wikipedia database right because uh, in Wikipedia you have the text but in DBpedia you have content in terms of RDF okay and that very useful so you have a number of data set uh, that actually represented in terms of uh, RDF and this uh, data actually could be uh, connected or could be linked. And this is an example of how uh, we could link uh, data. For example, uh, you have a hotel, okay, and then you have the restaurant, okay, which actually uh, is information of two sites, two websites. Okay, but if uh, this hotel and uh, restaurant are located in the same city, then you might be able to uh, actually connect this. So all these are represented in terms of, of RDF. So each this oval is uh, represented by using a unique URI. Okay, so uh, since you have a unique URI, therefore it's easy to identify uh, which sort of information. Okay. So that is uh, uh, what I, I, I uh, actually uh, uh, started doing research about 10 years ago, link open data. And then uh, after that then, uh, the concept of open become more important and interested in the open. So um, extend this into uh, open data, open education, and the open access. So that, that is uh, my current uh, interest. So I wish to uh, show you another motivation why I'm interested in this open access. I hope that this works. Students are expected to cite articles from scholarly journals when they write research papers. You probably use journal articles in your own work. You probably also encountered journal articles that you wanted to read but couldn't get access to. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at how scholarly journals are published today. Professor A does some research and writes an article about it for free. He wants to publish it, so he submits it to a journal in his field. The journal likes those articles, so it asks Professor B and C to peer review it. The professors read it, evaluate it, and send it back for free. The journal sends Professor A the changes that need to be made, if any, and Professor A sends them the final version of his article at no cost to the journal. The publisher then puts Professor A's article with a bunch of other articles, edits and formats them all together, and then charges people for access. How much does it cost your campus library to buy a subscription to the journal? It depends. If it's a journal of econometrics, a year subscription costs as much as $2,155. If it's the journal of geophysical research, it costs $5,760. If it's the journal of brain research, it's $21,744. Not all scholarly journals cost this much, but when many of the key resources for students and faculty cost an arm and a leg, not even the best funded university libraries can afford them all. So librarians buy what they can afford, and students and their professors just have to hope they aren't missing something important. But it doesn't have to be this way. There's an alternative to the closed subscription-based scholarly publishing model, open access. Open access is free, unrestricted, online access to scholarly works. Open access journals use advertising, sponsorship, author fees, and other sources of revenue to support the cost of publication, keeping access free to the user. 
Authors can choose to publish their articles in one of over 4,200 peer-reviewed open access journals, or they can put a copy of work published elsewhere in an online repository. Open access lets anyone read the latest research. It helps scholars stay up to date on each other's work. It enables computer-assisted text mining and mashups, which help uncover trends that no one would have suspected. It gives authors more visibility and impact, and it makes schoolwork a lot easier. Open access brings curious minds and the world's knowledge together. Isn't that what academia is fundamentally about? Free, unrestricted, online access. Open access. Okay, so uh, probably you have this feeling, right? Many of us has actually reviewed uh, many papers uh, free of charge, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we write paper, we format the paper, review the paper, but after it's published, then uh, you have to pay, right? And uh, now they have a new scheme, right? Uh, if uh, you want your paper to be open access, you have to pay even for well-known publishers, right? You have to pay, and then the, the printed version may come later. Also, that, that is the, the motivation why I'm interested in, uh, in this uh, open access and uh, the open research uh, data. So what is open uh, research data? So we start with uh, research data. So research data, as you know, there are data that, uh, that are corrected, observed, and created for purposes of analysis to produce original research results. And open research data is the research data that actually has no restriction on the access, enable anyone to access them through the internet. Okay, so that, that is the uh, open research, definite open research the data. And actually open research data is actually is a small part of what is called an even larger attempt, it's called open science. Okay, so open science, you have the more concept of open data, open access, open research. So open research data is just a component of open science, and this is something that is actually happening. Okay, so what's happening internationally? The G7, okay, um, a group of a very rich country. I think uh, two countries in North America, Canada, USA, four countries: Europe, UK, Italy. France, Germany, and one in Asia, Japan. Okay, so uh, they have agreed actually to focus on the construction of infrastructure for open research. Okay, and then they propose a policy called FAIR. FAIR stands uh, for uh, this fiber, okay, accessible, interoperable, and usable data. So this is the agreement of the G7 that they're going to construct infrastructure to support the open research data. And what should it happen in, uh, in Europe? In Europe, uh, two years ago, they started a very large project called Horizon 2020. Okay? And the reason why it's called, because the budget for this uh, project, is seven year project, starting from uh, 2014 uh, to 2020, okay, seven years budget. The budget is 80 billion euro. Okay, this is the funding for the government. And in addition to that, they expect to have the private sector invest on this uh, that as well. Okay, and in this horizon, they also uh, propose the concept of open research data. Okay, so in uh, this. Uh, Horizon 2020 project. They believe that open research data will offer better value for EU research funds. Okay, uh, so the public uh, will have the benefit from open research data. And open research data will encourage research across scientific fields. So you will have uh, multidisciplinary research by opening your research data. So what is done by uh, this project? So it make as a policy that all research data will be open by default. So open by default means that if there's no restriction or no condition, then the research data must be open. 
can meet the concept of open by default. So if there is no other condition, the data must be open. Okay, and it uh, also uh, apply the FAIR principle, fiber, accessible, interoperable, and reusable for all the data okay, that have received funding uh, from this uh, project. And um, so uh, this uh, project requires that those countries, those who receive the funding from this project must take measure to ensure open access to their research data and provide open access to any other research of, of, of their choice. Okay. And uh, the grantees are encouraged to also share data sets beyond publication. So not only publication that you open to the data, but you can also uh, find by other means as well. Okay. And uh, it's also required that all the proposals under, under this project when a researcher submits a proposal under this project, they must prepare what is called data management plan or DMP. Okay. So data management plan will give details how the data research is going to be generated okay. and how to ensure that uh, the data is going to be curated, okay. preserved and kept for long term. And so also uh, the BMA must keep, must keep information what parts of data that will be open and, and how is the, the good. Probably not all data is going to be open because there might be some private uh, information that maybe should not be open. So, that's why the, the speaker must be a very good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, you, you right. should do like the same. We should do like the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, now, uh, as I mentioned, maybe there are some cases that uh, the data may not be open. Okay, and uh, maybe there are three reasons why uh, data are not uh, accessible. First is because of the privacy. Then the second one may be the IP, intellectual property mm -hmm. rights. Okay, then you could use research. Mm -hmm. And the third one is maybe uh, it might jeopardize uh, your research. For example, when you do some experiment, mm -hmm. you might not inform your subjects before. For example, testing some drugs, oh. you may not tell, ah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to uh, test uh, this new medicine or this new drug. Right? That might be a reason why uh, you could use in order not to open your uh, your data, okay? And this uh, project, they actually started uh, in 2014, and it started to have sort of pilot projects that asked all the project proposal uh, to use this policy of open research data. So uh, out of these uh, 431 uh, side projects, about 60% uh, of these uh, projects agree with uh, this. Uh, open research data experiment. And from this year, 2017, they all require the open research data for all the projects uh, that are going to be funded uh, under this uh, Horizon 2020. Okay, and uh, after the two years of pilot project, actually they found benefits of open research data, okay. And uh, this might be the case, uh, for example, in the uh, field of bioinformatics. Yeah. They say that they could actually uh, have benefit of 1.3 billion euro per year by opening research data in the field of bioinformatics. So it's not only uh, research, but you can actually uh, feel uh, tangibly uh, the benefit of open research data. Okay. And this uh, amount is actually 20 times of the operational cost of this bioinformatics uh, institute. Okay, and this is from the real experiment, real data from the Horizon 2020. Okay, and this actually is something that I, I, I wish to use this to convince the, the Thai government as well that they should actually adopt this policy of open research data. Okay, so that is EU. EU. Uh, EU. Uh, how about UK, who is going to, to be uh, exist uh, the EU? The, the UK also 
support this open research data. So the four uh, organizations uh, that providing funding for research in the UK also uh, adopt uh, this uh, open research uh, data as well. How about you, USA? The National Science Foundation also uh, support this idea and uh, so it support the policy of chiding uh, data as well. They require all the research proposals similar to the Horizon 2020 that all the research proposals submitted to NSF has to prepare what is called data management plan or DMP. So DMP actually become a very common uh, term now that all the research proposal has to uh, to uh, attach this DMP to any research proposal. And it could be a very short one. Uh, the SF, NF, NSF require only two pages, okay? But it's a must for all the research proposal to be submitted uh, to, uh, to NSF. How about in Asia? There's also an attempt in Asia. Uh, actually, uh, in uh, early December, Next month, there's going to be a workshop, a meeting on open access to be held in Kathmandu. Mm. So any one of you who are interested uh, in this um, um, gathering, okay, therefore to actually promote the open research, you might be able to uh, join this um, workshop uh, as well. I think it's welcome. Uh, unfortunately, I actually I was invited to uh, join this uh, workshop, but uh, I have uh, a meeting in Tokyo, so I cannot uh, go to join meeting. But but uh, I think that they, they try to uh, actually encourage more Asian countries and researchers uh, to join this uh, workshop. Okay, Kathmandu is also a very good, uh, it's good uh, city to visit. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah. Uh, next time, maybe Rosatana maybe wish to organize yes. this <laughs> <laughs> workshop. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and, and it's important because once held in any country, then I think the government of that country will become, uh, say, uh, recognized, uh, start to recognize the importance of open research. Okay. Yes. Yes. And the aim of this, of course, in order to support open science. Uh, I mentioned it's more general than open research data. Governments, universities, and other stakeholders must adopt policies, develop services, and change their practices, allow sharing research outputs. So that's the aim of uh, this Asia uh, Open Access Meeting. Okay, internationally, there's a, a, a group of researchers that uh, form a community called RDA, uh, RDA stands for Research Data Alliance. Okay, that try to actually to promote uh, the concept of open research data. And right now there are two branches, two major branches, one in Europe and one in uh, USA. So very soon uh, we might be able to have one in Asia uh, as well. So what is RDA, Research Data Alliance? It's an international member-based organization uh, that focuses on the development of infrastructure okay, and community activities that reduce barriers to data sharing and exchange and the acceleration of data-driven innovation worldwide. And it's quite active now. So uh, this is the vision of IDA. Uh, researchers and innovators openly share data across technologies, disciplines, and countries to address the grand challenges of society. At the mission, RDA builds the social and technical bridges that enable open sharing of uh, resource data. Right now, uh, there are over 6,000 members. So members could be organizations and could be also individuals as well. So uh, covering about uh, more than maybe 130 countries, uh, mainly still in Europe. So about 50% of the member, about six. 6,000 members that are uh, located in Europe. And the second largest in North America. In Asia, it's only 9% still small. Uh, so I, I think we uh, we should try to do something on, on this. And as I show you, uh, the Horizon uh, 2000 
2020 has shown that we have also monetary uh, benefits of this open research data. Okay, so these are the members, uh, some of the members of the IDA. Um, so we have universities, uh, Caltech, and uh, we have publishers, widely. Uh, so and then some uh, research organization or kit. Uh, so, so you have uh, all these uh, different types of organization that member of this uh, RDA. So we hope that uh, we will uh, be able actually to join this uh, RDA soon. Okay, and then how about, uh, so that is uh, open research data. So how about research support systems? We start with the research uh, life cycle probably you uh, are family, we are family of this. So uh, we have problems that have to be solved. And based on the problems, when we start to do the search and discover some sort of possible uh, leads to the solution. And then we drop some idea in order to uh, solve the problems. And then we decide our study, we acquire materials, collect data, store data, analysis data, interpret the findings, write report, and then publish the report. Right, so this is sort of the life cycle of doing research. Okay, and during this uh, life cycle, of course, we uh, produce uh, a number of output. Right, uh, we, we produce data, we produce a report, we publish a paper. And uh, research support system is a system that actually uh, support the activities and the productions of this kind of the output for each step in the research life cycle. And there are a number of uh, systems that have been uh, developed, but one of the most uh, active one and the one that is actually being supported by RDA is called Open Science Framework. Open Science Framework, you might use Google and then search for information. And uh, so this actually is, is a website that supports the research life cycle. So uh, actually you can uh, register as a member of this system. And then uh, once you have a project, then you can actually register your project. Right, you can uh, submit, uh, actually you can load your data file Okay, you can write paper, and then you can invite your collaborators uh, to join and then uh, work on your project by using this system. Okay, this uh, open science framework is also an open source. So instead of, uh, in addition to using this uh, centralized system, you can also download the system and install in your own uh, server or institute. Right, and then you can make sure of that. This is uh, one that uh, actually is being uh, promoted by group working on uh, RDA. Okay. And uh, so uh, that, that is what is uh, happening uh, for the, uh, the, the general support for uh, this uh, uh, open research uh, life cycle. Uh, regarding my own uh, research, uh, I actually uh, started to think of trying to develop a system that support researchers about seven or eight years ago. Okay, and uh, my idea is is trying to uh, actually enable researchers to share their research output, research data. Okay, uh, by not having a centralized system, but have a kind of distributed system. But this is a system that actually can be linked and that can be shared. And, and that is uh, the idea. So instead of having one centralized system, like open science of, um, framework, I think it's probably better and might be able to fit very well uh, with the Thai culture, or uh, maybe Asian culture, that uh, most of the researchers, they want to keep their own data in their own new location. Okay? They may not be willing actually to put uh, their research data somewhere else. Okay. So the idea actually is to uh, develop a, a network of distributed research data okay, that enable the researchers actually to bring and to share the data. 
Okay. And then, uh, so the, uh, the ba basic idea of uh, what I had uh, developed uh, is uh, to combine some of the system that actually use, uh, that support researchers. And we have selected a system called Open Scora, which I will introduce later. Okay. And combine with the concept of standard called application profiles that will enable uh, research data to be shareable and then use the concept of link data so that they can be connected. So what is Open Scora? Open Scora is a free open source web application built on top of Drupal. Uh, this was selected about seven years ago. Uh, this time I might be able uh, actually to change from Drupal to Open uh, Science Framework as well, but we stick to this Open Scora. Okay. And uh, this open scholar is actually allow scholar, researcher, or teachers to build uh, their own website very easily. Okay, and uh, after building this website, then uh, they can, uh, the researchers or teacher can store their CV, their publications, blogs, announcements, and the image or other information related to research. Okay, uh, so this is the, uh, the the website of. Uh, uh, open Scora. It's originally developed by Harvard University, but now it's being used by a number of other, of other universities, including Princeton University, Arizona State University, University of New Hampshire, and some other universities. Okay. And by using Open Scora, uh, it would help a researcher to build higher citation counts. So if you want uh, to increase the citation of your publication, then Open Scora could help you and receive more web visibility. Okay. And also uh, help you to actually uh, promote yourself by using this uh, Open Scholar. Okay, and we use this Open Scholar and then, uh, but in order to uh, enable sharing of data, we need to have the metadata to describe the data that's stored in uh, Open Scholar. So we use the concept of application profile so application pro uh, profile is, uh, simply speaking, is a schema of metadata. So it's similar to schema of databases. So uh, an application profile is, is a schema of metadata. Okay, and it's different is that the uh, an application profile will combine existing schemas. So it will not invent all the new schema or, or uh, data elements by themselves, but try to make use of the existing uh, schema or standard schema, okay. And uh, in, in uh, our uh, link uh, Open Scholar, so we have selected uh, a few standard uh, metadata schema, the Dubbin Core, the uh, Frame or Frame, okay, Bibliographic Standard, and Vivo. Vivo is also an ontology describing researchers, okay, and then some uh, the long, uh, the uh, learning object. Uh, metadata. So we uh, selected uh, the well-known existing schema, then combine, then create uh, what is called a uh, common application profile. Okay. So we have one uh, common application profile that describes the research data okay, of all the proposal, CV, and all that. Okay. And our idea is that uh, we have one common uh, application profile, but it, we allow universities, research institutes to customize this common application profile. So you may have uh, university A, university B have different, a little bit different uh, schemas, but they share this uh, common uh, application profile. And by doing this, then uh, it would be possible okay, to uh, for the uh, research institute actually to share uh, the data. And apart from sharing the data, they also link into uh, what I have shown, DPPDA also could be linked. Okay, so you can actually uh, get the, uh, the uh, DPPDA information as well. So these are some of the, uh, the design that we have. So let me just show you some uh, example of the application profile uh, that uh, we use. Uh, the um, for example, this uh, the prefix you have the title, you have this uh, assistant professor, assistant professor, and you have the first name, middle name, and the last name. So these are the information about uh, researchers, and we select that from 
uh, this well-known uh, 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 name space devoid for uh, this RC uh, stand for Research Council of Thailand. So the Research Council of Thailand also have uh, decided some elements uh, that used to describe researchers, and we uh, also adopt the elements that uh, have been designed by Research Council of Thailand as well. And this is uh, some metadata elements uh, about the research uh, projects. So we have the research uh, project title, the keywords, leaders, and then uh, participating researchers uh, or colleagues that help me do this. So these are uh, the common, the so-called common uh, metadata elements uh, schema that uh, we design. Uh, but of course, uh, each university can customize uh, or adapt or change uh, some of the elements as well. Okay, so uh, with this uh, applicant profile, then we'll be able uh, to describe the profile of the researcher, research projects, evaluation reports, uh, research project and then research outputs. So this will sub actually support the uh, sort of the major activities for research life cycle because whenever you do uh, any research, getting funding, funding, you have to submit your research proposals, you get the uh, midterm evaluation, and finally you submit your final report and your final outputs. Okay, and you can actually uh, put all these uh, outputs or documents under this uh, link open scorer uh, system. Okay, and as mentioned that uh, with this we, we can, uh, since we use this standard meta schema, use R and use RDF, then you can actually link uh, the data across uh, university and also link to this uh, uh, link uh, open uh, data cloud, DBPD, and then some other data sets. Okay, that's uh, this uh, BIM instruction, the work that uh, we are uh, doing. And we are implementing this uh, system and we are testing it. Uh, and we are contacting the uh, research council of Thailand and see whether they are interested in using uh, this uh, system. And uh, I wish uh, just to conclude uh, my presentation by showing you some cartoons, three good, three cartoons. My data too. So these re research researchers, <laughs> right? And this is what is happening now. We just the research all the research each time we try to actually hold our own data. Okay. Even though the money for the research actually come from the tax, right, from the society, mm -hmm. right? But but you still keep your your data. That is what happening, right? Okay. And the data are mine. Okay. Even though money is your, but they don't have mine. Okay? And uh, that is the past. So the future is that you have the data tree where all people okay, can actually make use of that, of the data. So that is, uh, is the future. I hope that you will join this team as well. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for a very uh, interesting uh, talk from uh, Sevilla. Now uh, we have short time for uh, comment and discussion. Do you have any comments? Or questions? interesting uh, to have the chat data, but I'm not sure for the Thai context right now. Is it possible to push, for example, EDA or TIF, or who who got to be handle this? I, I think even now I, I see that uh, we have uh, some system that we can keep in, but all of them never connect with each other. But which organization should be the, the one who to arrange this? Uh, to so have for the Thai uh, context, uh, as probably you know that in, in Thailand there are two important funding agencies. One is the Research Council of Thailand, 
and the third one is a uh, Thailand research uh, fund, right? And these two organizations actually have the power to uh, apply this uh, policy. In the TRF right now, they actually collect the final reports of all the projects funded by themselves, right? Okay, and then they put some of the research, final re research reports on the web, but not the raw data. It's just the summarized data. Okay, therefore, to answer your question, uh, I think the uh, Research Council of Thailand and then the Thai uh, Research uh, Fund uh, Foundation could be the organization that mature, that could maturize this uh, open research data policy. It, it possible. Actually, I try to uh, have a meeting with uh, some of the TIF people and then uh, actually try to uh, to say that follow the National Science Foundation of USA uh, because the NSF is similar to TIF. Right. But then sometimes if you like the key in the data, it's quite a tedious job. Or, or uh, somebody do it for us or yeah. it's quiet if you do it. That, that, that's the reason why uh, this link open scorer or open science framework is a system that actually you can use. It's an open source so when you start a project, actually you can start creating a project and then you have a component of that data uh, proposal and then all that experiment collaborators. Mm -hmm. So the researchers themselves we actually key in the required information. Mm -hmm. And and we have actually such tools already. Really? Oh, okay. So so instead of, of having your own or using just a Google document, right, you have a whole system that actually support the life cycle of your research. I think uh, this is interesting man. That, uh, we, are, we, should, we should use this. Yeah, that is why well, actually well, I, I, I wish to get your support as well to convince the research council of Thailand <laughs> to convince the Thai research fund yeah. that uh, they actually should adopt this uh, open research data. It's nothing, it costs them nothing, just the policy. And as the Horizon 2020 show, you have immediately the benefit of sharing the data. <laughs> Yeah. One point three billion e euro. Okay. Let's make it happen in Thailand. <laughs> so yeah, mm. but I, I also like the proposal, but I need to write in the word, uh, Microsoft Word. And sometimes the format is very difficult to. And then uh, anyway, we cannot use it after that. It compiled to the PDF, put it over there. No, no, never use it. Yeah. For uh, example, in Open Science Foundation, if you write your proposal in in. Uh, in uh, because so what you can mm. you can upload and store that. I see. And then they have also virtual control. Yeah. Which is actually very important, right? Because you have to rewrite your proposal. And you when you have many collaborators, so you have to check in, check out uh, mechanisms. So you see that I feel. And the reason why I share this is not only uh, Thailand. I think that uh, that uh, other countries if uh, in Asia if you try to push uh, this kind of policy. Okay, it could uh, not only for researchers but also for the society, mm. uh, and 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 and, and uh, that uh, is the reason why uh, I make this presentation here. That I should ask the Chinese researchers, mm. organizations, and other countries to join it as well. I'm not for sure for the Chinese. <laughs> the Chinese have this kind of system or not? Do you have an open research data uh, <laughs> activity in China? Research data? Yeah. No, not open. Not open. Oh, but we have, a, have some websites, like the, in Chinese it's called the data hall or something. So you can update your data research and get your credit. So other, if you upload your data, you get credit. Then you uh, use that credit, you can download the others' data. Uh, yeah. okay. So many text mining, social media processing, many kind of web yeah. okay. such social media data, open big deep uh, data has already there. This is by uh, not by the government maybe, 
but they are also by the government. Uh, we have to sign the con contract something. But uh, for me, I'm planning to apply that one to upload my data. Okay. But right now, your uh, research funding agencies do not require uh, no. researchers to. Do not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it maybe it depends on different domains. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not an expert at all, so I, uh, I have uh, listened to such a very understandable explanation of the uh, latest uh, development of uh, data, or data uh, uh, share, sharing yeah. concept. So uh, I wish you will put this, uh, I wonder this is not filmed today. So you will film your lecture today again, uh, and then put in the. I, okay, good. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube. YouTube. Okay. Yeah, then uh, all over the world, uh, people uh, understand uh, very well okay. what has been happening. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, very useful for everyone, not okay. uh, only to for, for the experts. Okay. Yeah. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Don't go away, but hopefully. Thailand and Asia would be <laughs> enough for me to meet my, my objective. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your suggestion. Uh, you, you, you have one slide that show about the workshop, right? Yeah. The how many countries that participate? I'm not sure. Uh, I'd like to know that how about Asia, what is the recognition of this? I'm, I'm, I'm sure that actually I, I, I wish to follow uh, uh, that workshop as well. I am serious that uh, maybe uh, we, we try to organize uh, that kind of workshop. Uh, maybe in, in, in the future, maybe not next year, but in, in the future. And, and the, we are, uh, the workshop on open access that is going to be held in Kathmandu next month. So uh, I try to get uh, additional information uh, from you. Yeah. It's, really, it's really important because uh, four years before, I uh, hold this conference. And use the team of uh, open data, and from that time, um, literally government, uh, they look uh, the open data and they try to convince the internal policy. And nowadays, each uh, high government have to provide data set. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you bring it in Thailand, it's, it will the presidential team and uh, yeah. may have really impact. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next time, maybe I invite Dr. Tamashai to give some of your talk to the professor.